Hi, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. Well, the Spectre engine is full blast. Everybody's seen the trailer. Really cool trailer. Very dramatic. Not a lot of action. Kind of a puzzle. Trying to put it all together unless you've read the script. Naughty, naughty. Um, but the reality is we're starting to see a lot of things. A lot of pictures, a lot of the clothes. One of the things that we have identified is a boot. And it's the Danner boot. And I know that there's been a lot of discussion online about this, but we are here in this video today to discuss the Danner boot. Now, the Danner boot, uh, you see it in Austria, in a wonderful place called Solden. And this is an American-made boot. I'm a real big fan of it. It's got Gore-Tex lining in it. Um, and interestingly enough, um, one of the things that I did was I heard that it's true to size, so I did order a 9. We'll see how that works. Um, but the reality of this is, is it's extremely well built. A lot of the details, averaging in price anywhere, I've seen it as low as $225 all the way up to $375, so you want to shop around. I found this actually on Amazon for about $240, so right at that particular price point. But a lot of identifying marks um, from behind the scenes when Daniel Craig is actually walking to his hotel. Behind the scenes you see the Vibram Soul. Um, you actually start to see a little pieces and parts of the ties, the little rivets, the little details. What's even more exciting about this is, is that when we were with the Danner folks at a trade show for men's clothing, especially USA made men's clothing, they did confirm that the boot was used, and it was an interesting story. They knew that about 40 of these were ordered to some place in the UK. They had no idea why. So it was a happy little accident surprise to find out that Danner boot is now a Bond boot. So of course, if it's a Bond boot, not only do we have to own it, we have to review it. And we're very fortunate today because weather is permitting. So let's take a look at this boot, and I'm actually going to go backwards in time to show you when we first got the box and what our reaction was to the boot. So why don't we unbox the Danners first. Um, obviously you can see from the box, it's a really cool kind of vintagey looking box when you open it up. Uh, love it. It's got kind of the cardboard aspects. And didn't realize, but obviously since 1932. And by the way, folks, I have not taken these out. Now, I heard that these fit true to size. Um, I am a 9 US, and so I took it that. Um, for a lot of my Crockett and Jones, I take a 8.5, but there you have it. Oh. All right. Well, first of all, some really nice, nice crepe wrapping. A little pomp and circumstance to it. Very nice. And there is the Spectre boot. Very, very nice. Let's take a look at that. Absolutely beautiful sole. There's the, uh, well, there's the Vibram label. So it's going to be bouncing back. It's really, uh, really, really good, powerful stuff. Uh, it looks like it could grip to a wall, kind of pull a Spider-Man. You can see on the inscription on the side, made in Portland, Oregon, made in the USA, Danner. Love seeing that. You know I really support the whole United States aspect, the whole American made. And inside the boot, holding its shape, is some very cool little card. Danner since 1932. And, uh, oh, very nice. It comes with uh, kind of insoles. Not sure what those are for. Maybe, uh, well, maybe they are to take up any kind of loose room in there. I'm sure I'll discover it. And I'm sure we'll have a, a ton of um, postings on Facebook saying, New Ninny, didn't you know what this is? So it's got a little bit of details on the side, stitch it down, very sturdy. Um, talked a little bit about the outsoles themselves. And then uh, it says maximum support for heavy loads. I mean, let's face it, all right? Yeah, before James Bond picked these up and decided to go to Austria, um, these are work shoes. I mean, these are really well done. The waterproof aspect, the Gore-Tex aspect says that you can use them in the snow. And uh, we spared no expense because guess what? Even though it's the end of March and it's April, we decided to implore Blofeld and create a snowstorm. So you can see that 
we don't yet have the budget to go to Austria, but we do have the budget to start an evil weather machine to test out these Danner boots. So why don't we go do that? Uh, we're going to put our best minds of Bond on and head out into the snow. Wee. So, of course, if I just manage to open up the little information that they have that comes in the boot, we can find out what those inserts are. So, those are Danner orthotic inserts. Let me read you what this is, because it's a really cool function of the boot that I'm sure Bond would utilize. We ensure our boots fit, you, fit your foot like a glove. Our patented technology is easily applied in any style of the boot or shoe. The orthotic is constructed of an antimicrobial property. Who doesn't like antimicrobial? Which fights odor-forming bacteria, right, when you're running away from Spectre. And it's shaped with a raised instep to provide arch support, while a ribbed, for your pleasure, perforated base allows air to circulate freely around the foot. The Danner Orthotic is yet another detail which ensures that the performance of your Danner boot lives up to the highest standards. Holy hell, could this Bond boot get any better? So it's got all those parts and pieces, but... Let's really see how it does out in the wilderness. So a couple details I think are important to really point out about this. First of all, obviously all leather. It's got that Vibram sole that I talked about. But the bulkiness and wrinkles inside the shoe, it's inherited. So that's how the boot is manufactured. When you see that, don't start freaking out. It does have that stitch down construction, which you're going to want to, uh, because it really gives you that stability. And it's waterproof but extremely breathable, which is kind of a nice thing that usually doesn't go hand in hand. Um, it's USA made, like I said. It's got a very classic design. This design dates back to the early 1900s. And so it's, it's the whole idea of, yes, you can use this outdoors in the snow and in the rain, but reality-wise, this keeps you extremely comfortable because it is lightweight, thus the name. So as you can see, the snow is starting to disappear, but I have been able to kind of give these a bit of a trial run. Really good, very comfortable from the get-go. I own uh, several boots from Crockett and Jones, um, obviously from churches, and uh, even um, uh, Red Wing. And Red Wing takes a little time to uh, break in over time. Danner right away felt very comfortable. I'm so glad I went down half a size to an 8.5 so I don't have that slippage in the heel when I'm walking. I can imagine like with some action things you do not want the boot slipping that much and I gotta say very warm. I thought the Gore-Tex thing was going to be uh, a load of hot air, excuse the pun, but it actually worked to keep uh, my feet very toasty and warm. Of course I've got some good wool socks on, that always helps, um, but very comfortable. Let's keep it going. So as I'm walking, one of the things that I'm noticing is, you know, upon first steps, probably the first half mile of walking in these, feeling a little pressure in the ball of the foot. That's not unusual. It's breaking things in. I will say that I'm really happy that, uh, here we go, ice, snow, works perfectly fine. I'm really happy I put those um, orthotics in. I thought they were, you know, kind of not much to them, but they're actually providing a lot of comfort and support and really good airflow, especially as you uh, tuck everything in, it tends to cut things off, but that's not the case. So we'll keep on walking and uh, sharing the experience. So how did these do? And by the way, for consistency's sake, you remember outside when I didn't have a beard and now I have a beard? Don't ask, it's movie magic. Trust me, it's better if you don't know. So the reality is, is these were phenomenal. Now, of course, it had the whole veneer of being a Bond boot in a Highly action-packed scene, obviously, but it was very lightweight. I know boots. I live in the Northeast. I live in Pennsylvania. I know snow. I know cold. I know ice. I know good treads. This is a good boot. So if it did not have a bond association, would I own them? And that's really the litmus test that I usually use. The answer is yes, I would. They were fantastic. Um, I love the orthotics. It kind of made a nice little cushion when I was walking. I will say this. I did go down half a size, 8.5, and I'm glad I did. The 9s would have been slipping way too much. So just keep that in mind when you do this. Now, there is a way to make these even more accurate. Let me show you how. So here's how you make this even more accurate. Go out and get these extra grip 
ice cleats. This is to help reduce slipping injuries during icy weather conditions. It's great for extra grip on snow and ice, wet grass and mud. And we know that at a minimum, Daniel Craig wears them. And so chances are Bond wears them in the scene. Uh, these have an incredible grip on the sole, but these even make it better. Nice rubber would fit right over the boot. It's got these little metal cleats that'll actually connect and bite into the ice. Buyer, beware. There's a lot of wrong ones out here. I got these on eBay. They're from the UK. I haven't seen any in the States here. Amazon had a few, but when I ordered them, they sent me red ones. It was really wrong. So you want to have four cleats up here and two here. This is the right configuration. How do we even know that, David? David, how do we... We know that because we have pictures of Daniel Craig walking with his foot up and we see and can count the amounts and the treads. Of course we have that, right? One other way to make this whole outfit as you put it together extremely accurate. Go out and get, I sound like a, a hawking guy, go out and get an Aladdin bento box. This is the bomb. Um, good friend of mine, Legally Bond, shout out to you, uh, discovered what Daniel Craig was using to eat his lunches on the shoots. And this is what he uses, and it comes with a little separate compartment. It's all foam covered in plastic, so it keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. But this is the right size to get. It's the right color. It's this kind of strange lime green. I've already carried my luncheon here, a bunch of Fage yogurt and stuff like that when I was feeling healthy, some chicken, etc. You want to play the Bond part? You want to go that extra distance so people want to lock you up for being a fanatic as opposed to just a fan? Get one of these and you're just getting closer and closer. Now, we got questions. What's the jacket he wore? Is it matchless? Is it bell staff? What is it? Uh, what are the pants? What are the gloves? I dare say probably by the time this video comes out and maybe in between the next one, we'll start to know why. But today it was all about the Danner boot and associated accessories. So this has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Can't wait to show you the next big surprise that's right around the corner. See you soon.